Good morning, one and all. Welcome to the Pink and Match Day vlog. My name is Connor Southwell. I uh, thought I'd do it behind this lovely bit of artwork this morning, give you um, all you art fans a bit of uh, something to think about. Uh, of course, Norwich City heading up to Everton today to face their second team who play in Merseyside. I tried not to say Merseyside side, that um, got a bit of a tongue twister in the first take of this, but um, we've pulled off this time, I think. Uh, thank you all very much for watching. Um, it's going to be an interesting one today. Of course, Norwich head up to Everton, a side who are somewhat revitalised under Marco Silva after uh, a good or an important win, rather, against Southampton prior to the international break. Norwich, of course, coming into this game off the back of a fairly disappointing and disheartening 2-0 defeat to Watford. They need to prove their Premier League credentials again. It uh, feels like a similar situation to after that international break when we headed down to Bournemouth. Um, it just feels like they need a result for a bit of confidence at the moment. The good news is Christoph Zimmann is back. Um, really intrigued to see what formation Daniel Farker goes with today. Um, that's going to be fascinating. Really interested to go to Goodison Park. Never been there before, so it's a new stadium for me to tick off the list. Um, we are already in Stoke. You join me in the confines of my uh, rather lovely hotel room, um, which is quite spacious, actually. Very, very nice and spacious, but we won't do, <laughs> I won't do a TripAdvisor review at the moment. What I will do, though, is show you my lovely view I've got which, uh, here we go, for all you hotel fanatics, there's a lovely view of a, a car park in Stoke, which I'm sure you're, you're all very interested in. Um, in about 10 minutes' time, I'm going to go and meet Paddy and Dave for breakfast, and then we're going to leave here about half past 11 to make the final leg of our journey up to Everton. Really, really excited for this one. Um, I think it's got potential to be an interesting game. Um, we'll put it that way, but you'll be able to follow me throughout the day. But for now, let's go and get some breakfast. On final note, before I do head to breakfast, this is this is a reassuring sign on the uh, on the bathroom door in, in the hotel, which you uh, which you perhaps don't want to see um, when when you come and visit somewhere. Uh, I haven't set off the fire alarm yet, so I suppose that's good news. Part later, there is Goodison. New away day for me. Not done Goodison before. Operators going through their last one, which you may be able to see there in the far distance. They are the Norwich City fans, just the lower tier they've got this afternoon. Um, and the ground is filling up nicely. I think this is one you'd put under traditional, but has a nice feel about it, despite the press box being rather cramped. There are the teams as well for you. you. I mean, you can just run down this list in terms of Everton and pick out numerous players of both quality and expense. Uh, if we look at Richarlison, a player they bought for 50 million from Watford. Gilfie Sigerton as well, a similar fee from Swansea. Theo Walcott, of course, coming from Arsenal. Luca Dinier, who has been one of the most, uh, one of the brightest attacking lights in the Premier League, despite being a left back. Yeri Mina, of course, from Barcelona. Czech Tozern from Turkey. Morgan Schneiderlin from Manchester United. Uh, Gabriel Sidibe from Monaco. Tom Davis, of course, is an academy product. And even on their bench, Michael Keane, a fully-fledged England international. Dominic Calvert-Lewin, a man highly regarded in these parts. Alex Awobi, uh, formerly of Arsenal as well. They signed him in the summer for a hefty fee. Seamus Coleman, um, I think they've got a nice song in these parts. About him costing 50 grand. But it's been the stalwart, he's the club captain here. Moise Ken as well, Juventus, uh, former Juventus striker. Hasn't quite hit the heights, many hope, but still young and still an option from the bench. And uh, you're going to have to excuse my pronunciation but Benny Bank Banning Jimmy I think I've got that right uh, he is an academy prospect as well so that's an Everton side that perhaps the quality doesn't uh, equate to where their position in the league is but now if we switch over to that Norwich 11 the interesting news Emi Buendia dropped uh, he finds himself on the bench Patrick Roberts is on the bench Christoph Zimmerman is back uh, whether that is, becomes sort of a, a 4-3-3 or a 4-1-4-1, I suppose we'll see once kickoff commences. Uh, no Ibrahim Amadou, despite Daniel Farker being given the opportunity due to having two fully fit centre-backs for the first time since August. So, interesting strands in that team news. Going to be interesting to see how this one pans out between Everton side, who seems somewhat revitalised after a good win against Southampton, and a Norwich side desperate for points after a poor showing against Watford. Good 
Half-time here at Goodison Park, score nil nil. Norwich City have played themselves really well, I think, in this game. Um, there you go, Dave Watson just uh, milking the applause from both home and away end, in fairness, of course, former Norwich City player there as well. But yeah, good, good first half from Norwich. Um, disciplined against an opponent and haven't pressed them in the same way we've seen teams press them in recent weeks has allowed them to really get a, a foothold in the game and what they have built with Teti and Tribal is a really solid base that's allowing Byron and Aaron to take a few more risks in terms of positioning and then you're asking both Simon and Godfrey to find them with some diagonal passes which they have done brilliantly it's not been uh, an action-packed first half, but it's been quite controlled and it's felt like Norwich have been in the ascendancy for the majority of it. They'll be kicking themselves with the opportunities they haven't taken. If we look at Ornel Hernandez in particular went one-on-one uh, and, and they've had a few half chances, Campbell on the half volley and Byron will have cut back as well. But it's been, a, it's been a pleasing performance from Norwich. There's a lot more balance throughout the side. They seem to be a bit tougher to play against, against an Everton side who I don't think have quite found top gear. And perhaps the question is, is more towards whether they will um, adapt and change the way in which they are playing. Um, I think we, in this second half, I expect to see Everton come out and press and with the quality they have, particularly from an offensive sense, you would imagine Norwich will have to ensure some tests as of yet. But make no mistake as we sit here right now, there is uh, certainly potential for points in this for Norwich City if they can maintain that level of performance and also the way they're applying themselves. Welcome to Goodison Park. Do not scratch your eyes, do not readjust your phone. You are here and right. Norwich City have not just recorded their first away win of the season, but have also managed a clean sheet and also managed two goals. Um, what a performance from Norwich City. A game they managed really well in truth. And to me, it feels like every time I've done one of these videos uh, since I took this job, I've been talking, I've used one word probably more than any other, and that's balance. And um, the major concern for me within this Norwich City team has been about the lack of it. Today, there was balance running throughout that side, and I'm gonna talk about uh, a major protagonist to that in a second, but let's, let's just analyze that performance a little bit. This was a Norwich City side who hadn't scored um, since the opening night, just over there at Anfield. Um, so they must like Merseyside in, in terms of scoring. 
This was a Norwich City side who have picked up one point on the road all season prior to this game. This is a Norwich City side who sit bottom, or sat bottom of the Premier League um, on what, eight, eight, seven, eight points, something like that. This was a Norwich City side today who came here um, looking like a side who had been re-energised, who had an injection of confidence again and who looked like the mold, their old selves, to be completely honest. And look, a lot of people will point towards Christoph Zimmermann as the, the major factor in that. And I'm not disagreeing with that. He was certainly a, a contributing factor to Norwich City's performance today and how d more defensively assured they, they looked. I felt the whole defensive structure was, was a massive part of that though. And um, that leads me on to perhaps again, something that I've been hitting my head against the brick wall constantly about in these videos and, and talking about the midfield because Norwich haven't quite found a mix or a balance uh, in, in that midfield that was capable of doing both both sides of the game in terms of being defensively resilient but equally contributing in attacking phases of play as well. And today we saw uh, Alex Tetti, Tom Tribal, two players that I, I know a lot of supporters aren't keen on in, in terms of that combination. Um, and it had been tested in the championship and some questioned the style of play um, that Norwich City were imposing with them to in the side. But actually what we saw today was a Norwich City side who were prepared to go to war in midfield and were prepared to block everything and, uh, and tackle and um, work hard in transition as well. And what it gave them really was a real solid base in the middle of the pitch that prevented counter-attacks, um, didn't really give Everton any opportunities for to, to penetrate inside um, those lines between the centre backs and between the centre backs and the full backs. So that was really pleasing. And in turn, what that allowed Norwich to do on the ball was push was push their respective full backs up. So it was Sam Byron we saw numerous times in the second half in, in advanced positions because of that solid base behind him. Equally, Max Aaron's I, I felt had one of it his best games of the season in terms of his contribution um, because he was allowed and he was permitted to go and, and, and explore and express himself higher up the pitch and again that comes back to Norwich City having a solid base defensively and Christoph Zimmerman of course was a major figure in that because Ben Godfrey looked more assured I, I felt he was perhaps shouldering too much responsibility at the back uh, Zimmerman was a calming presence some lovely diagonal passes out to the full backs and I've already explained how they created those positions wider. And equally from an offensive sense, we've seen Imu, uh, Timu Puki be very, very isolated um, up front. And today that wasn't the case. And that's because of one man. And that was Kenny McLean, who I thought for me was, was man of the match. I thought he was brilliant all afternoon. Um, and you could probably chuck six or seven names at me in, in terms of players to, to counteract that argument. But for me, in terms of the job Kenny McLean done, there wasn't a more crucial one for Norwich City in this game from an offensive sense, at least because what he did was essentially offered a presence for Everton to think about. And, and that prevented Timu Puki from dropping too deep. And that ensured that Norwich could get players closer to him and get up the pitch more successfully. And it ensured their midfield, and again, I'll keep coming back to that midfield base, could move as a collective and they, they could move that block from a low block into a mid block. And of course it helps Everton didn't press them that much. And that was a surprise given, given what we've seen teams do in recent weeks. And it didn't really seem like an Everton team that was working through the gears they, they seem to sort of um, stutter all afternoon they had one spell um, probably from about the 65th minute to uh, Norwich's second goal when, when Dennis Rebeni scored where they huffed and they puffed but apart from a Sigurdsson chance that, that Krull saved low didn't really come close um, hence the frustrations that we saw at the end of the game with one supporter uh, angrily protesting at uh, Bill Kemright for Marco Silva to be sacked but uh, that's enough about Everton what Norwich did today really was, was applied themselves um, and asserted balance all over the pitch. And when you see a team play like Norwich did, all it can do is provoke hope because after what we've seen, particularly on the road this season, but equally at home in terms of giving the ball away cheaply, cheap turnovers, playing, in, playing football in the wrong positions on the pitch, this was everything boiled and stripped back to simplistics and basics and getting those right and using that as a foundation to, to build. And if you look at Norwich's first goal, it comes from a Zimman long ball. It's knocked down. Puki holds off a couple of uh, defenders, tees, in, uh, tees off um, Todd Cantwell, who slots it past Jordan Pickford. It's a very simplistic goal in terms of Norwich's 
um, style and, and, and the intricate workings we've seen them. This was a bit more direct and playing off the second ball, but it was effective and it worked because Everton did find themselves exposed because of how high they pushed their fullbacks. And if you're going to push your fullbacks that high, you have to use the ball better than Everton did this afternoon. Um, and, and that was a major factor in it. And then for the second goal, it's, a, it's actually a really well worked goal in, in, in stoppage time. You think uh, Tim Krull's got the ball, plays it short to Amadou, and you think he can just launch it long. And eventually the ball works out to, to just this touchline down here um, where Buendia and uh, Aaron's exchange passes beautifully. Buendia makes a little inroads. Eventually it falls to Dennis Shrebeni, who, uh, who wrestles off a couple of defenders before uh, bundling it into the back of the net. But that was a really good goal. And this felt like a Norwich team who were in control of the fixture all afternoon. And the possession stats will, will probably dictate that Everton had more, more of the ball, but Norwich dictated where they had that, had that possession. And that's a major part of it. And look, this, this isn't going to, uh, you know, was, uh, I think we've reached so many junctions in this season where we could point as being potential starts and potential points where Norwich can kick on. For me, this is it because if they apply themselves in the same way and copy and paste this into their fixtures going forward, then they're going to be competitive. And all they did today really was kept themselves in the game in the first half. In short, they went into half-time level um, and that in itself breeded a bit of confidence for them. And as soon as they did that in the second half, they applied themselves, they asserted themselves, um, they won turnovers high up the pitch and that allowed them to create overloads in attacking areas. And that's how they scored their goals. It was a, a really impressive, and it, this will be, um, spoken about as an impressive away performance. Um, the ramifications of it for Marco Silva uh, remain to be seen. This was a very vocal stadium in, in terms of what they wanted to happen after that game and that's for uh, him to be sacked. So we await that with interest. But I have to say the away support were excellent all afternoon. Uh, only a pocket of them. You may, if I spin around just in that bottom tier there, uh, and they were superb, sung their hearts out all afternoon and my God, the players needed them, particularly for that final 15, 20 minutes where legs had gone a little bit. Um, they got the second goal and the celebrations were there for all to see. This was a mammoth away victory for Norwich City, um, given the context of everything that's gone before and what they've done in the international break is clearly worked on how they act out of possession and they were superb today and fully deserving of the three points and hopefully finally that means we can watch match of the day with some degree of pride um, for all of your post-match analysis make sure you check out pinken.com as well plenty of good stuff in there including paddy's pointers as well which is always a good read that provokes some debate um, but for me at goodison park that is it thank you very much for watching and we'll see you soon and f for once on a Saturday night, we get to talk about a Norwich City victory.